Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. Ireland not weighed down by number one ranking ahead of All Blacks clash. Really scary, fierce coastal erosion could put tourism in seaside town at risk. Joanna Malwitz is the first woman to lead a Berlin orchestra. And, no, she hasn't seen tar. Inside the Taliban's luxury hotel. Roberto Saviano faces defamation verdict for remark about Georgia Maloney. Ireland not weighed down by number one ranking ahead of All Blacks clash. Japan Times. Ireland's head coach, Andy Farrell, acknowledges that Ireland has had an inferiority complex in the past. However, he believes that his team is now ready to embrace the challenge of becoming the best in the world. Ireland, currently ranked number one in the world, will face New Zealand in the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals. New Zealand, a three-time world champion, has long been considered the benchmark for test rugby teams. Ireland has never won a knockout game at the World Cup and was heavily defeated by the All Blacks in the quarterfinals of the 2019 tournament. Really scary, fierce coastal erosion could put tourism in seaside town at risk. ABC. The managers of a caravan park in South End, South Australia, are calling for urgent action to prevent their business from being washed away by coastal erosion. The park has lost approximately 3 meters of sand from its front due to erosion caused by strong winds and waves from the Southern Ocean. The main beach in South End has been closed since autumn due to concerns that people walking along it could accelerate erosion. Local councils are responsible for erosion mitigation along the beaches in South Australia, and the Wattle Range Council has voted to ask the government for increased funding to combat erosion. Possible solutions being considered include building a stone barrier across the back of the beach and bringing in sand from Adelaide's West Beach. Joanna Malwitz is the first woman to lead a Berlin orchestra. And, no, she hasn't seen tar. The Guardian. Joanna Malwitz, the new chief conductor at the Konzerthaus in Berlin, has become a sensation in the classical music world. At just 37 years old, she is the youngest music director to lead a house in Berlin, and the first woman to hold the top job in a leading Berlin orchestra. Malwitz is quick to downplay the significance of her gender, stating that when she stands in front of an orchestra, she is only concerned with one question, does it work or not? However, she acknowledges that there is still a need to talk about these matters, and hopes that one day it will no longer be interesting to ask her the question. Malwitz is known for her lack of hubris and her modesty, with one musician describing her as completely subservient to the music. Her conducting style has been described as high-voltage and refreshing, raw, risk-taking, and she is praised for her ability to plumb the emotional depths of the music. Malwitz is determined to reach people who may not yet know how passionate they are about classical music, and often takes the audience on a journey through a piece of music ahead of a concert. Her expeditions concert format has become very popular, and is her way of communicating her passion for the music. Malwitz wants to show people that classical music is not just for a select few, but something that can be enjoyed by everyone. Inside the Taliban's luxury hotel, The Guardian, the intercontinental hotel in Kabul, Afghanistan, was once a symbol of luxury and cosmopolitanism. But over the years, it has witnessed the rise and fall of different rulers and has now fallen into the hands of the Taliban. The hotel is run by the Taliban, who are attempting to implement a new experiment in governance by forcing Taliban and non-Taliban to work together in the administration and government-related businesses. This experiment will play a crucial role in determining whether peace and reconciliation are possible in Afghanistan. The Intercontinental Hotel is a microcosm of the future of Afghanistan under Taliban rule. The hotel's marketing manager, Samiella Fakiri, is not a member of the Taliban but works for them. He is responsible for marketing the hotel in a country where 9 out of 10 families cannot afford enough to eat. Fakiri has set a profit target for the hotel and is trying to attract guests, even though the country is largely cut off from international banking and there are no busloads of tourists due to the Taliban's rule. The hotel's human resources manager, Mohammad Ilyas Niazai, is a member of the Taliban. He joined the group when he was 16 years old, driven by revenge after his uncle and cousin were killed by a special army unit. Niazai is responsible for quality control in the hotel's kitchen but longs to return to the mountains and the forests. He views working at the Intercontinental as a prison and misses the freedom of being a fighter. Despite their differences, Fakiri and Niazai have formed a friendship and are working together under the Taliban's rule at the hotel. Roberto Saviano faces defamation verdict for remark about Giorgia Meloni. The Guardian. Italian anti-mafia author Roberto Saviano is facing a verdict in a criminal defamation trial for calling Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni a bastard. Saviano, who has been under police protection since the publication of his book Gamara, could face up to three years in prison if found guilty. 
The case has drawn international attention and criticism of Italy's harsh defamation laws. Penn International, a global writers' association, has expressed solidarity with Saviano and called on Meloni to drop the charges. Defamation is punishable in Italy with prison terms of between six months and three years. In Western Australia's far north, community leaders say the status quo cannot be allowed to continue. ABC. Indigenous people from Western Australia's Kimberley region have highlighted the issues they want to be prioritised if the voice to parliament referendum is successful. Martin Sabasato, a Bardi Jawi man and longtime advocate for increased access to education and employment in Aboriginal communities, called for increased awareness of Aboriginal culture and protocols to ensure effective government policies. Jody Humphreys stressed the need to address substance abuse, which leads to a cycle of disadvantage and increased crime rates. Tony Yule highlighted the lack of access to basic necessities such as clean water, Wi-Fi, and medical supplies in the community of Wankajunka. Talia Payne emphasized the dire state of mental health access in regional areas, particularly for young people. How Aussie extra virgin olive oil is bucking an international trend. ABC. Domestic demand for Australian olive oil is increasing as international prices for the product reach record highs. The lower prices of imports have made Australian olive oil more competitive, leading to a shift in consumer preferences. Despite an overall decrease in olive oil sales nationally, Australians are spending more on olive oil due to the increase in oil costs. The trend of buying Australian olive oil has been strengthened by recent conditions, with consumers valuing the origin and quality of the product. Australian olive oil producers have seen an increase in demand and are benefiting from the support of Australian consumers. They hope that the trend of buying Australian olive oil will continue. Flying cars and film stars, the Olympics of festivals lands in Sydney next week. ABC. South by Southwest, South by Southwest, the annual creative arts festival held in Austin, Texas, is expanding for the first time in its 36-year history. This year, the event will take place in Sydney, Australia, from 15 to 22 October. The festival includes musical performances, film screenings, gaming competitions, tech showcases and industry talks. Among the celebrities making appearances will be Chance the Rapper, Nicole Kidman and Black Mirror creator Charlie Brooker. However, ticket prices for the event are high, making them inaccessible for many people. While the festival is targeted at the creative industries, there are some less expensive options. A $40 Expo Day Pass is available, giving access to the Tech and Innovation Expo at the International Convention Center. In addition, a number of free events will be held around the city, including talks, workshops, live cooking classes, augmented reality and robotics demonstrations, and an outdoor cinema screening classic films. South by Southwest Sydney is intended to be a smaller, scaled-down version of the main festival, with a focus on the Asia-Pacific region. Over 40% of the talent at the Sydney event is from outside Australia. Southern states sizzle as Indian Ocean climate driver nears record strength. ABC. Australia is experiencing a heat wave as a result of a positive Indian Ocean Dipole, IOD, which is causing drought and hot weather across the country. A positive IOD is marked by cold water near Indonesia and warm water off the Horn of Africa, which alters wind direction and leads to below average rainfall and higher temperatures in Australia. The current positive IOD is approaching record strength and is second only to the peak of the 2019 event that preceded the black summer bushfires. However, the impact of the positive IOD is not expected to be as severe as in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Sixth Dimension, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Today, we discussed a wide range of topics, from the upcoming Rugby World Cup quarterfinals to the unique experiment happening at the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul. We also touched on the defamation trial of Italian author Roberto Saviano and the pressing issues faced by indigenous communities in Western Australia. Lastly, we talked about the growing demand for Australian olive oil and the excitement surrounding the arrival of the South by Southwest Festival in Sydney. Now, let's dive deeper into these stories, shall we? Starting with rugby, Ireland's head coach, Andy Farrell, believes that his team is ready to embrace the challenge of becoming the best in the world, despite their past inferiority complex. As they face the mighty All Blacks in the quarterfinals, Ireland's number one ranking doesn't weigh them down. However, they have a tough task ahead, as New Zealand has long been considered the benchmark for test rugby teams. Will Ireland be able to overcome their previous knockout game defeats and emerge victorious this time? We'll soon find out. Moving on to a more serious matter, coastal erosion in South End, South Australia, is threatening tourism in the seaside town. 
urgent action is needed to prevent further damage to the beautiful beaches and the local caravan park, which has already lost 3 meters of sand. The local council is requesting increased funding from the government to combat erosion, with possible solutions including building stone barriers and importing sand. It's a race against time to protect this precious coastline and preserve the tourism industry that relies on it. In the world of classical music, Joanna Malwitz has made history as the first woman to lead a Berlin orchestra. At just 37 years old, she brings a refreshing approach to conducting, described as high voltage and raw. Malwitz's passion for classical music is infectious, and she aims to reach a wider audience through her expeditions concert format. She wants to show people that classical music is not elitist but something that can be enjoyed by everyone. So, if you haven't given classical music a chance yet, maybe it's time to join her on this musical journey. Now, let's take a peek inside the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul, Afghanistan. Once a symbol of luxury, it has now fallen into the hands of the Taliban. The hotel is being run by both Taliban and non-Taliban staff, as part of an experiment in governance. It's a microcosm of what the future of Afghanistan under Taliban rule might look like. The hotel's human resources manager, a member of the Taliban, longs to return to the mountains and forests, while the marketing manager, who is not a member of the Taliban, is trying to attract guests despite the country's isolation. It's a unique situation that will test whether peace and reconciliation are possible in Afghanistan. Shifting gears to Italy, we have Roberto Saviano, the anti-mafia author, facing a verdict in a criminal defamation trial for calling Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni a bastard. This case highlights the criticism of Italy's harsh defamation laws, with International Writers Association Pen International expressing solidarity with Saviano. Defamation laws in Italy carry prison terms, which some argue stifles freedom of speech. Will Saviano be found guilty, or will his case bring attention to the need for reform? In Western Australia's Kimberley region, indigenous leaders are highlighting the pressing issues they want prioritised if the voice to parliament referendum is successful. These issues include increased access to education and employment, addressing substance abuse, improving access to basic necessities, and tackling mental health challenges. It's crucial to listen to these voices and work towards creating a more equitable society that addresses the unique needs of indigenous communities. On a lighter note, Australian olive oil is bucking the international trend, with domestic demand increasing. Consumers are valuing the origin and quality of the product, leading to a shift in preferences. Despite an overall decrease in olive oil sales, Australians are spending more on the product, supporting local producers. It's a win for the Australian olive oil industry, and they hope this trend continues. Lastly, the South by Southwest Festival, known as the Olympics of Festivals, is making its way to Sydney for the first time. While ticket prices may be high, there are more affordable options available, and a number of free events will be held around the city. The festival aims to showcase talent from the Asia-Pacific region and bring together creative minds from various industries. It's an exciting opportunity to experience music, film, gaming, tech, and more, all in one place. And there you have it, folks. A whirlwind tour of the latest news from around the world. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. What do you make of Ireland's chances against the All Blacks? Are you concerned about coastal erosion and its impact on tourism? How do you feel about the progress made in diversifying the classical music world? And what about the unique experiment happening at the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul? Don't be shy, share your thoughts, and let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.